start streaming and start recording. All right. <laughs> and then I have to go back to the most important spot and say go live. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Bless you. Make sure we are still recording. Yes, we are still recording. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Like, not only do I have morning voice, I also have, uh, whatchamacallit? I have, um, I have asthma voice. So, like, it's, it's, it's ultra deep. So that's wonderful. Yay. No, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, I, I, I have science problems. Like, like, when I wake up, it's basically just, <laughs> just, uh, like, I'm thirsty all the time. It's like, the hospital all night, so. Oh, gotcha. That's yeah, I used to call my friend at, like, it must have been 8 o'clock my time and 5 a.m. his time, and he would, I'd be like, hey, and he'd be like, you can talk to me like that anytime. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to you like this anytime. I want to have my normal voice. Um, yeah. So, uh, we were talking about fashion show I went to last night. Super fun. Oh, I wanted to say that before I went to the show, I went to five below and earlier this week I had been to five below I had seen that they had the Care Bears figurines for, uh, which we'll call it, um, for their 40th anniversary. Um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> didn't know they were that old. We're all getting that old, aren't we? Um, and, um, <clears throat> which we'll call it. So, um, yeah, like I bought, I bought a figurine. I, I got, um, fun bear or fun shine bear um and I looked at the different ones that they had and I was like okay well I hope I get like best friend bear and share a lot bear and I got good luck bear yesterday and I got share a lot or I got best friend bear so I'm ultra happy yeah um good luck bear looks very high and is pointing at stuff so I think that it's a good figurine to travel around with because um, I just imagine that, you know, he's, he's the hype dude. He's the hype dude, which is nice. Um, Sounds like an interesting compass. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Be like, mm, that way, man. Like, okay, it's, there. It's that way to the, to the 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the face he's making. Like, yeah, dude, you can go that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, sweet there, buddy. So, you, have you had a good week with the dog and with like? Uh, we're getting used to each other. Um, I oh. had a LARP last night, so I'm like, 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 riding that, mm -hmm. like, running that exhaustion level. But you know, oh it, yeah, it, it, it comes towards break. Yes. And, yeah, before we started recording, I was talking about going to the fashion show last night, and just, um, it was, it was oversold, uh, it was standing room only, my friend and I, we thought that it started at 7, the show actually started at 7.30, so we got there too early, um, and then sat until, like, 9 o'clock, and then we were both like, uh, we're tired, we gotta go. Uh, so we left, and had drinks, and, and food, and then, uh, I missed my train. <laughs> so I had to wait uh, 45 minutes for the next train, uh, which is like, I, I know, like, I just couldn't believe. So, like, Metro North on the weekend is usually, like, it, it's two minutes after the hour and then 34 minutes after the hour. It's very easy. It's very simple until 11 o'clock. Then it's just 1126 and you got the 1226. And you probably have, like, maybe a 126, and that's it. Um, and that's, so I, I, I missed the 1034, so I had to wait for the 1126. And I, I just, it's a lot. I just, I was not happy with that. But also, that sounds, that sounds interesting. yeah, but also not the end of the world. Like, it's, it's. I'm, I'm good. 
not the end of the world. You know, like you just you stand around in, in, you know, Grand Central for, you know, 45 minutes. Like, okay, all right, we're all good. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the um, art, the the artwork. I mean, it was artwork. Um, the fashion show was a sustainable fashion show, but I don't know. There were some things in there that I didn't feel were entirely sustainable, um, and some things that definitely the attempt was made to make it more sustainable, but like it just didn't look right. And I mean, I always have thoughts about that type of stuff where I'm just like. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, I feel like they were trying to do, like, more of a, what is that called? Like, a Star Trek type of thing, where it was like, here's this fabric that technically you could use <laughs> over and over again. And it's like, okay, yeah, if, if we all were kind of the same thing, that would definitely work. I could see that. Um, yeah. See. Well, I think Star Trek, my immediate thought is, like, um, like na- nano repair or something like that. But um, mm-hmm. I, I can see what, what, the, what the attempt is in that it's um, supposed to be, like, sustainable in a way that it can be, like, reusable and just... See, I would also think, like, biodegradable to a certain extent. Oh, but, gotcha. Like, yes. Is, like, it, or maybe it's, like, easily composted. Right, whatever. right. Yeah, natural fibers. Yeah. Not the, like, because a lot of things have, like, polyester or plastic, uh, have that yeah. as a blend, and, um, I mean, also sometimes, uh, people paint on clothes, uh, which, yeah. uh, if they use acrylics, it's plastic. So, um, you know, like, that can definitely, uh, affect the, like, the, the yeah, the, the biodegradation of a piece of fabric, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that that's just the way I see it. Yeah. 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 Um. All right. So the topic is Disney. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I went and saw Aladdin on Broadway with my friend Joey, who also went to the uh to the to the uh, fashion show last night. Um, and we talked about like you know different types of fashion and that type of stuff too. Um. So. Uh, Aladdin. The Broadway show changed up some of the things. Like, uh, they made it so, like, Aladdin's mom had just died, which I was like, okay, they really tried to lean into, yeah, I know, they leaned into all of the, uh, the, what is that called? The stereotypes of Disney from that time. Um, I mean, sometimes it was good, though, because the original music that they did create, um, they they um made it from um like that it made it sound exactly from that time so it was like amazing um and i think they took from bollywood uh there always seemed to be a lot of people on stage most of the time so i was like why is that a thing and then i was like oh it's because of the bollywood aspect okay i got it i got it i got it um and then uh what was the other thing they got rid of Abu. They gave him three friends who like helped him, um, okay. and they got rid so, of like, Raj. Yeah, of Raj. So, okay, so just to be fair, like in terms of like the Broadway production side of things, I can get that because it's it's a lot like harder to uh, like to, to, to have a monkey on there, and, like right, like, or even like what's suit so like i kind of get that but right i don't know why couldn't you just like why does that have to be three people like yeah i don't get I don't it know, either like, like, it feels like they're filming out the show or something i don't know right like it, and they had to be kind of uh you know stereotypical and you know uh like one of them was always hungry and one of them was always out for adventure and the other one was always like what the hell are we doing here you know. I remember Abu, and he was like, that, that was one character worth of stuff. Like, I yeah. don't know how much it split to like... To three. Yeah. 
Yeah. It does not feel like it's sustainable. But. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I guess if, like, the, if the Broadway show got popular, right, like, on any of, like, the Disney streaming services, then maybe, like, they could kind of go off into, like, the adventures of, like, Aladdin and his friends, or, like, one of his friends. I mean, there's spin-off potential, I guess. Like, I, I, this right. reminds me of, like, when they created, like, a, a, the movie into, like, 90s cartoon stuff, especially with Disney. Like, I remember Timon and Pumbaa, and I don't remember that show, like, oh, really yeah. having all that much. Because it was basically just, like, they went to the city a lot of time, or just dealt with stuff that, as far as I was aware, didn't really matter to, like, like, this, the actual I can't thing. remember how many episodes were in the jungle, but, like, there was a, I don't remember that many, like, mm. off the top of my head. So, yeah. How much can you get? Like, like how how much like reasonable um like like material can you get out of that? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're hoping for uh, what is that called? A Hamilton situation. I don't I, even know. I don't know. Yeah. Like I I I have this weird like like I I don't believe it's possible for like a lot of these properties to really make sense. But, like if they're that's how far we're milking, because I know Disney. They'll they'll milk a property to like, oh, yeah. like try and be dead. So, they do. Like, like this this seems like overkill to that extent. Like why why like like Demon and Pumbaa? I can maybe get in the in the in the height of like the Lion King. Um, oh man, know, yeah. Like, like like craze because like like Lion King that made an impact back in the day. Like that was really like, probably the most. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There was there was more, um, probably uh, more hard hitting stories than uh, than Lion King. But just as this was presented and how much of a cultural impact it had, I'd say Lion King was pretty big. But like, yeah. if you were to do a spinoff now about Aladdin, like any of the characters in Aladdin, it does not feel warranted at all. At all. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because there were already. Yeah, there was already enough. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing we talk about, like, when it comes to old Disney, is, like, they knew how to saturate a market with their shit. Oh, they did. They did. They knew how to market it. They knew how to, like, just get it, get it out, you know, to the masses. Um, and then they had, like, the whole Disney vault, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Where that, that it was exclusive. Was yeah, yeah. Because, because, like, I've always said this: like, Disney would make much, much more money if it started re-releasing stuff. And I remember, like, they used to do that, which was like, well, it's gonna be locked in the Disney vault for another, you know, ten X years, 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 years or all that shit. Yeah. It's like running out of time to want it, and not to mention the secondary market. Like, right. But, like, you can put in like special features and shit, and that would make it. Kind of, I mean, kind of like Star Wars a certain extent, but, like, not to the degree that Star Wars pulled that shit, but... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just, God, like, back in the day, Disney, like, knew... It, it was on t- It was on point. I think it that's really the best was. way to describe it. it Disney really was. was on point with their shit. Yeah. They, 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 they had, they had their shit together. <laughs> At some point. Um, I, I mean, so I think of, like, the, the the Disney Renaissance as, like, you had The Little Mermaid, you had Lion King, you had Aladdin, and um, uh, Pocahontas, right? And um, then, like, came some of the other ones that were, like, oh, yeah, they're, you know, popular. Um, but, like, those were, like, the four that were, like solid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that's considered, yeah, the Disney Renaissance. Um, and I'm like, I mean, that's good, yay. Um, definitely watching The Little Mermaid as an adult is hilariously different. <laughs> like, 
um, my friend was asking me about like, uh, oh yeah, there's Beauty and the Beast too. Um, was asking me about like which Disney movie I liked, and I was like, well, I grew up liking Little Mermaid. Now I don't know. Um, and he was like, w- like what what happened? I was like, psychology happened. <laughs> like, I don't like Little Mermaid anymore as much because she has to change everything about who she is just so that she can like be you know with this guy and like what type of um like message does that send um and I really like fairy tales and I like feminist fairy tales so like the feminist fairy tale of that one is like um hey you know you gotta uh like I like she she what was the story um she goes to the sea witch gets a cur or not get not uh, gets a spell um but then she gets up there and can't talk and so the, the um the prince figures out that she's under a spell oh what's that um her tongue in the original like her tongue got cut out oh gotcha so, um, no, there's this uh one by uh Zipes uh that's called Don't Bet on the P- Prince and it's a bunch of like retelling of of fairy tales. Um so in his version um the, she um is like he realizes that she has a spell on her. He does everything to undo the spell. And, at, like, then she turns back into a mermaid and, um, dies. And her last breath is, like, calling him foolish. Well, no, I was, I mean, her last word is fool, which could be referred to for herself as, like, I was foolish for doing this. Or he's a fool for, you know, trying to undo this spell that, like, you know, I made her have green skin and can't talk, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so yes, and then, uh, he was like, well, what about Beauty and the Beast? And I was like, so, I mean, that's like, um, it used to be called Stockholm Syndrome, now it's called Trauma Bond. Like, that's Trauma Bond. Like, hey, come, you know, live with me and deal with my anger, and, like, maybe I'll turn into a prince. Like, mm, mm mm-mm. No, that doesn't seem right. <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, we have to remember, like, the time frame these came in. Like, they were supposed to be, like, stories that were supposed to, um, like, give, like, they were supposed to teach lessons and all that. And they right. were from a time frame where, like, all this was very much, like, it was a different norm and everything. Oh, like, yeah, every, definitely. Everyone, um, yeah, like, like they, 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 I, I, I don't, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I completely agree with you. A lot of these stories were basically Stockholm Syndrome, you know, um, like, wish fulfillment for a very, like, different mindset, but especially right. nowadays, like, there's, like, I mean, that said, like, I'm also not going to fault, um, right, right. the source material, because it was written at a time when, like, you know, like, the, the most people could hope for was, like, to, to marry someone, you know, um, get out of their, you know, um, yeah, their they're, status. Yeah, there's their like their like, like, SES, their social economic status. Yeah. Yeah, I mean don't get me wrong, like they're very still shitty social there's still a shitty social situation going on. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Again, the the stories that they were portraying in there this like back in the day, like <laughs> as much as I would love to like criticize them by today's standards, right. I really don't love criticizing those like, <laughs> I, like I'm trying, I, I I do try to like give as much credence as I can to like when this was written. But that right. said, you're absolutely right. Like a lot of this shit was like you know Stockholm syndrome and the uh, and the uh, you know uh, pushing. I don't want to say an agenda, but like there was definitely pushing a mindset of like um, the upper echelon is like great, like it's it's infallible and like oh uh, yeah, it's there here, was but, that like, yeah. Kind of yeah. Like, I mean, that, that's the problem, is, like, when yeah. you have that kind of power, like, you basically just make it seem like, you know. And, and that said, like, it's also part, part, part of the reason I think, like, most of the stories still circulated was that they were from a time, they were from a mindset where 
like it was still looked on as like favorably to you know whichever uh, right you know, whoever was in place so that was just yeah I that would be it like, would be Grimm's right who like documented a yeah. lot of those yeah, yeah <clears throat> I can't remember when he documented or when they documented those stories I want to say it was like the mid 1800s um when it comes when it comes to Grimm's fairy tales yeah so. when were they documenting those because like I, I can't remember if they like traveled around and like it must so, have yeah Grimm's fairy tales I guess it was probably written uh, it was first published in 1812. 1812? Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, and then there was a, uh, an edition. Um, so it's like they got to their seventh edition by 18, uh, 1857, so like mm. within like 40, like, like less than 40 years. Yeah. Like they, they were in like a, they're in a pretty good cycle of publishing, so. Yeah. You know, they, they I'm assuming they had pretty you know, a good popular, they had a good, they had good popularity to them, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and, you know, like, um, yeah, taking those and adapting them to, like, uh, American audiences, and, yeah, like, I mean, there is going to be some change, because I'm like, well, I have <laughs> read some things, and, and, like, listened to them before, and I'm like, I think a lot of them were very different from what, you know, the um the actual thing was um but yeah and then yeah. uh of course you have uh, I mean one of my favorites which is a Russian fairy tale called Baba Yaga because like Baba Yaga yeah, sounds I love Baba Yaga man. yeah Baba Yaga sounds badass I mean the it's a Cinderella story but she's like like it's like no 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 it's called Baba Yaga it's named after the witch. Because <laughs> it sounds so Russian, too. No, we didn't name it after Cinderella. We named it after the witch. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love the Baba Yaga myth. I, 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 I'm familiar with, like, an interpretation of it through, like, a, um, a role-playing game. Oh, gotcha. But she still comes across as, like, an insanely awesome, like, character. Mm-hmm. Um, just I mean, because, like, yeah. God, it's just, it, it, like, the idea of just, um, this witch in the woods and just... With the just, house on the chicken feet with, like, the, um, the white picket fence that's made out of bones and, yeah, yeah. like, all right, cool. Yeah. I just love that kind of show. Yeah. Like, it really does, like, lend to, like, I don't know, I think the growing popularity for that kind of, like, story work, um, like, I think there always will be, and, um, like, I, I've noticed, like, Disney has been, like, reaching towards, like, like recycling as much of, of uh, oh, yeah. uh, of, of their properties as possible, and that's just because, I think they, they they're starting to see just how much um, like the, like the, the growing trend right now is that um, there's a lot of like darker themes coming into people, and gotcha. I have a feeling like the last thing they want is to play into it. Like I, I gotcha because I, I think they they see the writing on the wall. Like they cannot sustain themselves by like you know just children's properties. They have to expand right. into different stuff, which. Like, if you remember back in the day, a lot of their stuff was not just, um, like, it, it wasn't just, um, for children. Like, there was a decent amount of, of, um, like, there was a decent amount there that, that parents could enjoy as well, like, not just... True. Yeah. There was some jokes that definitely went, went over people's heads. Yeah. And it was yeah, meant to. Like, it, like, yeah, exactly. But the problem being, nowadays, it feels like... No one can um, can write anything with a little more meat to it, or at least they, they can't write anything new because they're afraid of like offending someone, or you know, um, or, or something. Or, or, um, yeah, yeah. There, there's just, like there's too much fear in like modern writing to really just 
tell us interesting story. They're just they're, I mean, they're tied to it, like just no 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 we're just we're gonna tell sounds, the same story we told a right. number of times just a different character. It sounds like they're getting there though a little bit with like Cruella and some of the other ones where they're it, like they're like oh Wicked got you know like um which we'll call it like really popular. Let's try to do some backstories. But like also not doing backstories on the heroes, like, you know, what what had been, you know, Aladdin's life before or what had been Belle's life before, you know, like it might be interesting. I mean, like also in Cinderella, they skipped over the whole like, you know, thing about like uh, meeting <laughs> like the, the stepmother. It was just like, yeah, so her mom died and then um, her dad remarried like, um, OK. That like you you kind of like gave me five minutes there to like be sad for a second and then you just kind of went on with your story. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's the weird part about yeah. like, this kind of thing where um like like features like there's there their archetypes typically um follow the same kind of uh oh, yeah like, based on or, like they follow the same kind of like pattern mm-hmm. yeah but there was something like charming about it mm-hmm. like the, like i don't know there's something about it that really lends to like it it not feeling as like stale as it, it turns out but that could that easily could be because um uh i don't know like there's something like maybe there's 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 a uh, maybe we're just finally seeing the writing on the wall when it comes to like disney writing and yeah. that it, it really does only follow that one formula right but I don't know, like, there's, there was something about, like, the writing back then, like, there was, I think it was just the effort, like, there was more yeah. craftsmanship to, to it. Yeah, like, I um, mean, maybe also... Like Toy Story, or... Oh, yeah. Well, what I was thinking was, like, maybe there was something to, with the drawing and taking so long, you know, instead of just being like, oh, we did, like, you know, computer rendering. Well, I think they were dipping into, what like, computer animation. And yeah, they like, were. And, and I'm not gonna be like one of those people that's like everything has to be the way it was. Like there has no, to be improvement. It can, and it yeah, it can improve. Easier. Yeah, and yeah, it makes it easier, yeah. and you don't have the weird like backgrounds and stuff that like, you know, like it it can progress and it can still be good. Um, what I was thinking was like, okay, so looking back at other stories, like um, there's this other story. Now it would be controversial because it's about Buddha. But um, Siddhartha, um, Siddhartha is, you know, like, hey, every seven years, your life is going to change. And, you know, here's the story of Siddhartha and how his life changed and his values changed. But, like, here, here's this really cool story, you know. Yeah, like, like I feel like, I, why, why, to my understanding, like, they're, they're not putting a lot of the time that they usually spend to write and craft mm. things. They're, they're trying to, to churn out as fast as they can. It's, it's, they want right. to like throw so much out there that something has to stay bland. But the problem being, yeah. they need to take their time. Because I remember right. Disney Quality is not like, good. Yeah. taking a while. Yeah, I, I remember that too. Yeah. I mean, there was a child, so like, I think the, 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 uh, the, the distance between the movies was like four or five years, which That's true. I mean, nowadays yeah. seems absurd, but mm-hmm. like, Back in the day, like I, I feel like it. I feel like it was warranted given like the quality of them. Right, right, yeah. That they took years to like. Um, I remember looking at like the behind the scenes, excuse me, <clears throat> with like um, the Beauty and the Beast, and like they would like be like, oh, you know, like like walk like have this guy walk into the room and like what is his you know like when he gets really mad and he like walks away and throws his like cape around like you know um what does that look like and then like the animators like looking at that repeatedly you know and being like oh, okay that's how you animate that and yeah now it's it's sloppy it's it's quick it's um you know like i i watch people who um know the industry better than i do um and uh they'll be like oh you know like um oh my gosh now i can't remember the actress's name um, the one who played in Bo- Beauty and the Beast, the uh, live version. Uh, oh, 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 God. Emma, I, right? Shoot, I know Hermione from Harry 
Right, I know, Hermione. Yeah, and it's like, I forgot what the name was. Um, 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 <clears throat> God, brain, work, work. It's okay. Emma Watson. Emma Watson. Okay. So, Emma Watson, there's some uh, points in the movie where, like, the lips don't, like, at, like they don't sync up, you know? And it it's, yeah, it's, sorry, my brain just went to a very different place. Um, but, like, uh, like, it's kind of like, you know, I kind of expect a little bit higher quality, um, from, like, Disney, if they're going to do musicals, if they're, you know, going to do live actions, and, like, the weird thing about Disney is that they get so much money, you know, like, Di- Disneyland is, yeah. uh, is expensive, Disney World is expensive, um, buying all the, like, uh, the shirts and every other, like, little thing is expensive, especially when it's licensed, and then, like, you have, like, the Broadway show, like, it was expensive. Like, you know, so I'm like, okay, so all of these funnels going into Disney, and they're like, hey, let's crank this shit out. Like, wait, 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 wait. You know, you really should be producing quality. Um, I, and I do have to say that all of the costumes, like, in um, that show, amazing, wonderful. Like, I don't know, it's just, yeah. you know, very on point for the film and yeah. Um, <clears throat> see, yeah. The way I see it, because um, I, I, I want, I haven't watched an actual like Beauty and the Beast live action movie, but I like watched enough like clips and oh yeah, and yeah. Into, like, That's what I do like, too. I, I gone through it enough where I can say like the, the problem being I feel like ego was part of the issue as well as like the director um, didn't mm-hmm. understand like how to like because because. As you said, they're, they're, like Broadway is one one medium because mm-hmm. um, there are some directors who are good at transitioning from movies or transitioning from Broadway to movies because it, it yeah. very it is a very drastic change. It is, in, yeah. Like 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 um, um like like plotting things and seeing where things go yeah. and how things like be brought like the brought from like the, the screen scene because you have like a stage. And a lot has to be lent to the imagination, whereas a movie, especially now nowadays with like technology and where it is, there's a lot, lot less um, boundaries in that regard. Mm-hmm. The problem is, not too many people are willing to like go harder into like research and like and perspective, like of trying to like pull back from being the writer and looking at the audience's perspective and how they view things. And I right. think that's like a big part of the issue is that the, mm. the, the disparity between the production and the audience they need to be able to like sit down as an audience member and see it without any kind of ego and gotcha yeah unfortunately, that's just, tough. I, I, I feel like Hollywood nowadays has like that ego centric like persona which unfortunately just really 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 is not in the best interest of Hollywood considering a lot of their money comes I don't want to say all their money comes from people like you know buying their movies or whatnot, but a good right. amount of it, I'm assuming, is from it's is, from is, is yeah. from that kind of like yeah medium. Yeah, and I mean, I, like I got so burnt out on like just Hollywood and and movies and all of that when I was like 16 that I just uh, I go to independent movies. I'll go to in, I'll go to movies that sound interesting, but like I won't go to mainstream movies all that often because i'm like well i don't care um absolutely yeah but i did i did watch the jungle book actually um i i was like i went to my husband and was like i want to see a movie because my husband loves movies and he was like which one and i was like i want to see jungle book um and i love that movie it's a really good movie um and i'm kind of surprised that you know like uh there are you know, movies based on rides at Disneyland, uh, in Disney World. Um, but like, there, it's it's fun. It's good. You know. Oh yeah, like like that's the yeah. thing. Like they're good at like marketing their properties. Well, yeah. At least I've seen them do that. But um, I I I really think that they need like people need to like um how do I, how do I say this properly. There has, people have to learn 
to stop, like, buying into this shit. And, like, oh, yeah. they have to give them a chance to, like, say, look, this is not what we want. This, like, here's what we actually want. Here's what we're asking stop. for. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, 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 we don't need this. Like, give us this. You know? Yeah. And I feel like the longer we go into, you know, trying to... Essentially, just like rewarding them for doing this kind of thing, I feel like it's just going to cause oh, yeah. more and more issues down the line. Like, yeah. Um, like we're we're showing them like, oh, here's this really really because the these, the only real way we can like directly tell like um, Hollywood what we like and don't like is with our wallets. Yeah, it is with wallets. Yeah. And that's like the that's the main thing about it is we need to tell them that with our wallets, and part of that is. We need, we need to start just saying no. Yeah, exactly. Just, like, just, just, just stop milking the, the, the barrel, so to speak. Right, stop, right, uh, exactly. Yeah, stop. The, the, you can't, you, there's no more, there's no more that you can get out of this venture. Move on. Write something original, you know. Yeah, I mean, like. First, but, but that's like, <laughs> like that, that's, that, 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 that's the monster word is write something original. Right, there, right. There, there's no way to do it. Right, but I mean, like, indie movies do it, and they do it great, you know? Like, I I remember my mom and her uh, friend went to see um, went to see But I'm a Cheerleader in the movie theater, and... Oh, God, I love that movie. Yeah, it's, and then my mom came home and was like, I think you're gonna like this movie. And, you know, star-studded... <laughs> indie movie you know that like like it 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 i i got it on dvd from um one of the um it probably was a best video or something that like went out of um it went out of business and i was like i'm gonna get this movie <laughs> and i'm gonna get ever after because like i might as well um but uh some of the reason why i would be away from like uh mainstream movies is because of the romantic the romantic aspect of it um before I got married like I dated and got my heart broken many times and after a while I'd be like I'm watching Alice of Wonderland you know because like there's no love interest there's no way there's a love interest there's nothing you know and like a little princess there's no love interest it's about a a daughter <laughs> you know struggling after her dad dies and then she finds her dad like that's a fine you know story like all of this stuff even like um uh indiana jones always has some like little love aspect where it's like could we not right now i, I don't want to have this yeah I, I get what you're saying like not everyone wants like I, I feel like like i don't know why people like want this kind of thing like i am as far as I can tell, like, most love story aspects, like, currently seem tacked on, like, without any kind of rhyme or reason for the most part. Right. Like, it just, it doesn't, I don't think it lends too much to it. Like, I don't right. think it really adds, a, a, like, a solid amount to it that... It's true. Like, I mean, Jungle Book did have the romantic aspect, and I was like, I wish they didn't get together. Like, it would have been so much nicer if there was not a Hollywood ending. If it was just like, we're not going to be together because we can't. You know, like, yeah. I don't want to do this to you, you know? Like, I don't know, like, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm really starting to just notice that, like, a lot of, like, writing, like, follows, like, the same, like, five different tropes, and yep. just, it really doesn't help. Like, it doesn't right. really lend anything to that, so. Right. And, like, I don't even know why it happened. Yeah, I mean, I, um, oh, there is kind of a love aspect to, um, a Walter Mitty story, or the, what, the Adventures of Walter Mitty, what, I don't remember, just the Walter, Walter Mitty, uh, I, I think. what was it called, sorry? The Adventures of Walter Mitty. Of yes, Walter. okay, yeah, there is a love aspect to that movie, but, like, man, um, I believe Ben Stiller was the one who directed that movie, um, and it is so beautiful. Um, but like oh, the secret life of Walter, the secret, the secret life of Walter Mitty. Yes. Um, there was a phrase a long time ago that was like, 
oh, you go on these Walter Mitty adventures um, because that was kind of like, a, a, you know, oh, you're you're stuck in your daydream again, you know? Um, and so then, yeah, like it, it went away. I guess it was a 1960s movie, um, which like when I told one of my friends that I saw it, he was like, oh, so they did like the whole spy thing and the terrorist thing. And I was like, what movie are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, no, the one with Ben Stiller. He was like, oh, I don't remember this. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like there was another one. It's very interesting. Um, but yeah, like, uh, you know, that's more adventure than love story. Love story, not so tacked on. Um, and the Stardust kind of goes through the same thing where it's like, I'm going to go on an adventure for this woman. And then something else happens and they grow as a person, which I'm like, I mean, all right, cool. I could get kind of behind that. You know, maybe you shouldn't have a woman be the catalyst, but like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Because like, you came back a changed person. Yeah. I mean, like the thing is with like love stories in that regard, they I, I, I feel like they need to really be like a, an essential part of the story as opposed to like them just feeling like a tacked up, oh we need to do this because you know, it 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 has to be in the movie. Like, right. So because we love story. Yeah, because why? we need to advertise that for some reason. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm starting to, like, see the cracks and tropes. Like, I, yes. I, I, I don't think all tropes are dead, necessarily, but no. I'm getting to the point where it really feels like it should probably not be as, like, like, just, like, there has to be some kind of, like, and I, and I get a lot of story ideas are recycled, especially now. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just, just, please, just. Just something. something yeah, just something different. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, yeah, the tacked on stuff, like, yeah, with Indiana Jones, I always think of that one where it's like, okay, yeah, it's just tacked on. It's just, it's just tacked on. <laughs> um, and then, uh, like, it, I mean, yeah, the, the other trope is uh, the adventure trope and usually hanging out with a tiger. Like, I don't know what it is about, like, hey, Going on an adventure, gotta have a tiger. Like, why? 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 You know. Like, does that mean that you're a changed person if you can go hang out with tigers? I think Tiger King changed all of that for us. Yes. Like, like I said, like, I feel like a lot of this shit is starting to get, like, just as tacked on as, like, it can possible and just, like, like, if you, can, if you can vary it up just a little, just, just enough where it's not, like, we're, you know, just so, just, out, like, at least give us some space so that the tropes can rest. Right, I, yeah. Like, like I said, like, I remember most um, movies being a lot less um, mass-produced. Like, there was at least some time between movies where you could, uh... That's true. Like, you get some breathing room. Nowadays, right. it's, like, yeah. You know, It's true, and, like, you have to, um, like, I think that, you know, maybe some of these movies are so um, important for millennials because, like, um, there there was so many times where we watched the same movie over and over again, you know? Like, uh, my, my brother loved watching Temple of Doom, so I, I like watching Temple of Doom. Um, I also like Crystal Skull because... Uh, it was filmed in New Haven, and when I went to go see it with my friend, uh, we were down the street from some of the places that they filmed. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, and then, uh, let's see, like, uh, and then, yeah, like, Little Mermaid, uh, Beauty and the Beast, like, Snow White, um, is there another one? Um, Sleeping Beauty, like, all of those, like, you know, like, I just, like, watched and watched and watched and watched, you know? Oh, so what's your favorite Disney movie? It can be from any time. That's a good question. Um, see, I'm, if we're going, like, 
like strictly nineties, which I'm like my when that's where I'm like my head is like currently like yeah. leaning towards. Um, so I were I rem- like the first Disney movie I really like like fully remember um, uh, vividly watching as a child. Like I believe was Beauty and the Beast. Okay. And this is like like back in the day um, when I was like. Seven or eight, um, but if I were to say like my favorite Disney movie currently, uh, God, that's, that's, a good, that's actually a really good question. Mm. Um, like the, I would probably say either like Fantasia, like the older version. Ooh, yeah. Um, like Fantasia was always like the one where I was like, I, like I didn't get it because I was like yeah. oh, I was a child like watching this shit. Like, like, it still fascinated me because it was just, like, it was weird, it was vibrant, no one talked, but it was just full of, um, like, with this wonderful, like, storytelling where it just, it flowed so naturally and everyone just was, 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 like, just vibrant and colorful and, and like, even the, the Chernobyl stuff was, like, it was, it was terrifying, but, like, I, I loved it, like, it was wonderful. I, like, I can vividly remember that kind of shit. Yeah. Like, um, I remember the I, elephants I, most. Like, I, I always yeah. the question. Yeah. Like, I, I actually despise the question, what is your favorite X? Because you just... Oh, God, just, yeah, I know. We'll just I don't know. Like, there's something about that idea where it's like you have to quantify all of it into, like, one easy-digest question. And it's like, I don't think, like, I really have one necessarily. Right, but yeah. But that said, like... Like, there's ones that like touch me in just yeah. the right way, and like I, like Beauty and the Beast. No, I I would definitely say Fantasia really was like as a as a person growing in general, it feels like that is the one that really just it sticks no matter how old I get. That one yeah. like like just really sings. Um. So of all <laughs> times, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I think for me, all time would probably be Dumbo, because I, it's a really, it's an interesting, kind of gentle movie that, um, I mean, it's problematic, obviously, with the crows, <laughs> but, like, um, it, there's just something about, like, the love of a mom, you know? Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think there's anything wrong, like, necessarily. I, I get what you're saying, though. Right, right, yeah. The, the Yeah. Um, And then, I I mean, also, like, I do like The Black Cauldron. I know that it's a little bit too much like um The Sword in the Stone, but, like, I like The Black Cauldron a little bit better, you know? Just, like, uh, I'm, like, very similar themes, but, like, it's just, it was... Like, there wasn't a Merlin, there was a witch, you know? Um, and, like, I haven't watched it in so many years that I'm like, oh, God. But, like, to hear, also hearing the story of, um, you know, like, the Black Cauldron and how, like, Disney kind of tr- 